Do you like your poetry with plenty of rage, eye-popping, liver-piercing gore fest? Then you should read the Iliad by Homer. And one question before we get to the review, did I enjoy this read? And the answer is yes. Welcome to Whiskey and Literature. I'm your host, Captain Mike, and I'm reading and reviewing 52 books in 52 weeks in 2023. This is my 30th book review of the year, The Iliad by Homer. And before we get to the book, let's talk about the author briefly. The Iliad is attributed to Homer, and we're going back to like the 8th century BC. And so while he was a Greek poet, and he's credited with the Iliad and the Odyssey, due to the fog of time, there is some debate about whether or not he's the actual author of both these poems. Regardless, he is considered one of the most influential authors of all time. All right, let's talk about the specs and stats of the Iliad. And obviously there's no original publication date for this book. And when did it go from kind of oral traditions to written down in this format? No one really knows. My book was translated by Stanley Lombardo, and he's also the translator and the narrator of the version that I listened to on Audible. And I did listen to less than half this book on Audible and read the rest of it. I do have The Odyssey coming up, and Fagels is the translator for that book. And I'm interested to see what the difference is, perhaps in the, in the flow of the words between Lombardo and the Fagels translation. And there have, of course, been numerous translations of this book. I did uh, buy this at the Goodwill bookstore. I paid $3 for it. What a deal. It's uh, 492 pages long. It does read pretty quick, you know, as long as you can kind of get into the flow of it. Because, I don't know if you can see, but the pages are not covered in writing, like some of the books that I have. So it does read pretty fast. All right, let's talk about the styles of the Iliad. And with many different translations comes many different styles or kind of flavors to the poem. So if you can imagine way back when, when this was passed down orally, how that might have been, that cadence, the rhyme and the rhythm. Some translations do try to mimic or preserve that, but I think it's very difficult. And sometimes when modern anachronisms find their way into poetry, it kind of takes me out of the time and place that it's set in. Many Greek cultural ideals are forward and present in the Iliad. Fate. And several times characters do just resign themselves to their fate. Something happens and that is understood to be kind of a sign from the gods. Pride is of course a major factor in this book. I mean, some of the characters are gods or are descendant of gods or are highly favored of gods. So how could you not just be full of hubris? Heroism and heroic deeds. War, oh the war. Description after description of tendons being sliced, livers getting punctured, arrows piercing, always right above the nipples and eyeballs popping from their sockets. Okay, let's talk about a couple of the characters in the Iliad and I'm only gonna name four. First of all, we have Paris and he seduced Helen, which precipitated the entire Trojan War. Helen, she is Zeus's daughter. Agamemnon, he is the leader of the disparate Greek forces. And then of course we have Achilles. He's the son of a king and a sea goddess. And he more than anyone determines the path that this poem takes. And I guess we'll name a fifth character or a whole group of characters, a pantheon of characters. And you know what I'm talking about. And you really should, I think, have a whole chart of the Greek gods while reading this book. I think it would help, it would have helped me if I would have had something kind of like that. Okay, on to the plot of the Iliad. So the overarching plot is that the Greeks are besieging Troy to get Helen back from Paris who has seduced her. 
But in actuality, the siege is just a vehicle to bring us the story of Achilles' pride. So let's see, Agamemnon, he was giving Chryseis as a prize in war, and he was forced to return her. And as recompense, he took Briseis from Achilles. So of course, Achilles wasn't happy about that. So he withdrew the 2,500 fighters that were under his command and refused to fight. So through the remaining bulk of the book, we have depictions of duels between the Trojans and the Greek heroes. And the war, it uh, goes back and forth depending on which uh, side is favored by the gods at that time. So then the Greeks get beaten back until Patroclus, Patroclus, a friend of Achilles, he just can't take it anymore. So he asks Achilles, can I borrow your armor and go into fighting with it and it'll help rally the troops and rally the Greeks and we can take it to the Trojans. And Achilles uh, relents, lets him take his armor and it does, they, uh, the Greeks rally, they're fighting the Trojans until Pat Patroclus, he is killed and stripped of the armor. Achilles, of course, takes this poorly and he returns to the battle. Zeus, he lifts the ban that he had placed on the gods participating in the war. And the fight is on. It rages and rage is what this book is about. And that's all I'm gonna talk about the plot. On to my thoughts of the Iliad. First of all, you should not read the Iliad in four days like I did. And I'm also almost halfway through the Odyssey, also just blazing through that book. I do feel bad because I feel like it's my first time with Homer and I'm getting towards the end of the year. I still have 15 books to read, including some monsters. So I'm blazing through these books as fast as I can. I am reading them, I'm turning every page, I'm enjoying these books, but you really should take more time than four days to read the Iliad. And second of all, as I mentioned earlier, you really should have a flowchart of the Greek gods. I think overall there is an assumption that you're relatively familiar with their structure and uh, their character and all that. Now you can of course, as I did, read the book without understanding fully their, uh, you know, their organization, if you will. But I think there's gonna be some nuances uh, to the story that you're gonna miss, maybe not fully appreciate, if you don't at least have a basic understanding of the structure of the relationships. And understand when you read a book like Homer, uh, the Iliad and the Odyssey, uh, it's gonna take you some time if you're not familiar with these types of books, uh, these, this type of storytelling to get into it. I remember I read the Aeneid earlier this year by Virgil. It talks about kind of the same thing. There's some same characters in the Aeneid as there are in here. And it took me quite a while to get into that. And the same with Homer. Like it's not just opening Dune or a Stephen King book and reading. Uh, the flow and the cadence is very different. It, it took me a bit of time to get back into it, and, but I do really overall enjoy the style. And while I am blazing through these books right now, maybe not giving them the, uh, the due diligence, the, the respect that they deserve, one of the greatest things about reading 52 books in 52 weeks in a same year and all these kind of great books is I do, um, I have a list of books that I want to return to, and I definitely am going to, when I can more leisurely understand and do some research while I'm uh, reading through Homer, I'm gonna return to Homer definitely in the future. I mean, I've also identified some books that I am not going to return to. And understand when you open the Iliad, this is a violent book. There's no shying away from the violence and the carnage. The personal nature of the physical combat. It can get overwhelming when you read page after page of it. So if you're gonna tackle uh, the Iliad, beware. Honestly, the Iliad was my first experience with Homer 
and it did not disappoint. I was more excited to read this book after reading the Aeneid earlier, and now I'm even more excited in the future, like I said, to be able to come back to this and revisit Homer. And I think that if you haven't given Homer a try, if you, I don't know why I didn't read this in high school. I know I certainly did not ever read any Homer. And I think if you haven't, it's, it's worth some time to, uh, to, to visit and see what it's all about. Okay guys, on to the star rating for uh, the Iliad. And I judge all books on five criteria. And if you have any suggestions, drop them in the uh, comment section below. Okay, first, initial response. How did I feel as soon as I finished the book? And I gave it a four, I felt pretty good. Recommendation, how likely am I to recommend this book? And then, you know what, I only gave it a two. I don't really think it's for everybody. I mean, I think everyone should read it, but I think that most people that, that I know wouldn't read this book. Style, did I enjoy the writing style? I gave it a three. Four, plot structure, how engaged was I in the story? And it got a four. Characters, uh, were they relatable, believable, engaging? And you know what, I mean, I really enjoyed the book and the characters, I gave it a five for the characters and Audible. For the books that I listened to, at least part of on Audible, uh, how was the presentation? And I gave it a three. I mean, the narrator and the translator were the same and I, I think he did an okay job, but I'm just gonna give him just an okay job. All right, so that's 21. And 21 divided by five is 3.5. So 3.5 stars for the Iliad by Homer. And I think for me, at this point, that's an appropriate uh, star rating. All right guys, thanks for sticking with me. In the description below are the links to my other reviews that I've finished this year so far. As I finish each review, I will add it in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, like it. Subscribe to see more of my contents. I do do both book and whiskey reviews. So if you're into that sort of thing, or if you stumbled into this video looking for whiskey reviews and made it to this point, I am Captain Mike and I do whiskey, but I also do book reviews. So feel free to check those out. But you know what to do, my friends. I hope you're reading something good and drinking something great. Turn the pages and stay thirsty. Cheers.